Okay, so I'm going to use Google Docs Word document because this is free pretty much to everybody if you don't have Microsoft Word. So I just wanted to show you guys another way of being able to um, get your little signs ready. Also, too, if you don't have Photoshop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to upload some of my images that I'm going to put on my keychains. So what you do is you go to Insert and go to Image, Upload from Computer. So then I'm going to just open the files. Um, so I have some background files and so I'm going to open those. I'm going to open this one. It's really big. So then how you adjust this is you click on it. You go here to image options and then you do size and rotation. And then here you can change the size. So just know like if you want to only change the width and not the height or you want the width and the height to be exactly what you want it, you need to do this uncheck lock aspect ratio. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to make these images fit. Um, I'm going to measure um, the sizes that I need for um, each one of the keychains that I have. And then I'm going to try to make the images that size. So what you're going to see me do here is basically I'm just going to make all my images different sizes so that I can add them to the keychains. Now that I have my images all on here and sized, if you want to um, be able to separate them out so they're not so close to each other, you can either try to put spaces between them by just you know put, pushing the space bar um, when you get the cursor between each image but sometimes that causes issues so what you can do is you could um, select your image and then do text wrapping and do behind text here we go behind text so select the behind text one and then this allows you to select your image and you can move it around So basically, I'm making them all be behind text. Okay, so then I should be able to move them. See? So then I can move them anywhere on the page that I would like them to go. So make sure you do them all at once because I felt like when I was trying to do it before one at a time, it wouldn't, it was being weird. So what you want to do is, let me see, why is it not behind text? Make sure they're all behind text. That way you can just kind of like move them from around each other. Let's see, do I this one? All right. So basically just arrange them how you want to have some space around everything so that when you do print them out and then laminate and um, cut them out and stuff that you'll be able to do that without having to worry about cutting the other design. So that looks fine to me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now go to my printer and print these out. So I'll show you that part. So I make sure I put the sticker paper um, in the correct orientation and on my printer settings, I just put in um, high quality, best photo paper. Um, you just have to figure out what settings that you need to use for your printer that makes um, the image comes out the best. Um, once you see it printed. So just play around with your printer settings to see what looks the best. 
So while that's while that is printing, I wanted to show you guys some of the keychains that I was gonna be making. So I have this acrylic. These acrylic keychains in different shapes. So these are the ones I measure to see like if I was gonna put like a letter or like an entire design. So after I laminate everything, then we'll go um, towards that process. Also, These are the epoxy resin molds that I'm going to be using. So they're basically, um, it came in a whole, I guess you can say sheet with all letters connected and I just cut them out individually so that way they fit in my, um, what's it called, my toaster oven because that's what I use to um, make these because I can make them pretty much in like five, ten minutes without having to wait overnight. Um, so then I'll make some keychains like this so you'll see epoxy resin keychains and then you'll see how i seal the acrylic keychains with uv resin um so that one's different this one you need heat to cure it and then for the uv resin you're going to need to use um what am i saying you're going to need to use um like a uv light so like if you do your nails and stuff something like that Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to laminate the sheet. So I'm going to take that lamination paper. Um, if I trim this down, then I'm able to, because usually the lamination paper is about the same size as the, um, as the sticker paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this down a little bit. So I'm going to take my paper trimmer. And I'm going to trim it down a little smaller. And then I don't know if you guys saw the design, so. All right, so I should say you saw the design, but on the sticker paper, it looks very nice how it came out. So I'm just going to trim it. Add a little garbage can. So I'll probably, I'll leave it like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my paper as well. So since I don't need to use all of it, just so that if I have something smaller that I can laminate, I'm not using up all the paper or it's just a waste of any of the lamination. So then how I do my lamination is I grab one of these um, and I literally take one end of it and then I like stick it to the table. So I like push down on the edge of it sticking it on the table so that it doesn't move. And then I line this up at the bottom. And then literally I just take the, is it a squeegee? And I let it kind of just lay down on there as I'm like pushing it. And I found that doing it that way Hope I got a little piece of hair in there, but it's not on the design, so that's good. If I do it that way, I find that I don't get any bubbles. Or if I do get bubbles, I get like minimal bubbles. If I if I don't if I don't put it down right, then yes, I can get bubbles. It also could just be to the type of um, lamination you have too. So if your lamination isn't the best, then you might get bubbles no matter what you do. But I find that this is the easiest way for me to do it because I've tried doing it other ways and I've always ended up messing up my stickers because 
I would have like a huge bubble on one side that I couldn't flatten out. So I literally just did this a few times. Just to make sure that it's on there really good. Okay. Alright. So once I do that, I am going to basically cut out each one so that then I can kind of measure it, measure it onto each one of the um, surfaces that I want to put it on. So this is kind of like wasting sticker paper, but I just wanted to see how this works because it's pretty much my first time making these type of keychains. Like I said, I've made keychains before, but it was just more so mixing the pigment dyes together and then um, and then just allowing them to just allowing them to what am I trying to say <laughs> allowing the colors just to come together and then I would design with some stickers on the um, after I've finished making them like curing them and then I would do the design but these I'm gonna try to put into the um, epoxy resin I guess this will kind of be the same way I do after I've made the keychain for the acrylic, acrylic version because pretty much those are already already made so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting out each one of these trying not to make trying not to cut on the design just pretty much cut around it so that they're separated from each other and then i'll match them up with either the what i'm going to make epoxy resin with or let's see or put them on the acrylic keychains these actually would make some cute stickers just like how they are i didn't even think about that so I might make these into some stickers. Let me know if you guys are interested in just having these be like just stickers just that you guys can purchase if you're interested. Let's see, the S. Hmm. I was thinking the S would look cute on this. And don't don't mind the how they look because they kind of look like um either scratched or what is the word uh, frosted I think this one actually might be frosted but they have a film over it so I'm gonna put this one on here okay and then for the rest of these let's see I think I printed out these are the then this one We'll go to the M and I'll show you how I get this design to perfectly fit into there. So I'm gonna use that one for that. So I grabbed one of these little metallic um, crafter pins. You just need a pin that will like transfer onto the um, back of the sticker paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline And make sure your pen is working. Okay. And you won't mess up your modes because you can just wipe this off with alcohol when you're done. So once you get it outlined, you'll just place how you want your design to go on. So I'm going to place it like this. Just making sure like it contacts all portions of the back. And then you can see the outline on there. And then I'm just going to cut it out. Oh, this looks like, and then make sure like if you cut it, sometimes a little sticker 
pieces come off. So just make sure you get any extra stickers. So look, that looks like that fits just fine in there. Okay. I'm not going to bury it in it. I'm going to have the background first, but so there's going to be that one. And then I want to just show you guys one more because I'm running out of time. So basically we're going to do this one for time's sake and this one since they're pretty much kind of like the same design and then we'll come back to do um, the rest at another time or I'll just show you like the outcome of them when I'm able to do it. It's like kind of hard to get these off so it's like a little, so it might not be frosted. Ooh, I was... Nope, it's not even frosted. <laughs> it's clear. So once you take those off, then you can do it. So what I'm going to do is for the stickers on this acrylic, I'm literally just going to stick this on there. Find a good spot for it. Okay, I'm going to stick that on there. And then I was thinking of doing like another design on the back. Since I don't have time to do that one. Maybe should I put it on the back of this one? Yeah. So what I'll do is then I'll put this sticker on the back. So let's see. I probably should have kept the thing on. Let's see. I'll use a pencil so that way I don't get this on there. I should have a pencil. So I'll use this pencil to trace around it. Let's see, how do I want this to go? Do I want it to just be here? Yeah, that's fine. This is just for demonstrational purposes. I'll probably just poke a hole in there. Okay. So I am going to put this one on the back. And like I said, see how it has a little white on it? So I have ways to fix that. So I'm gonna try to put this on so it fits exact. So basically I have the back here, same design as the front just say yeah the same design um so that's going to be one keychain and like i said i can use something to poke a hole in there um like this because you want to make sure you do this before you add your um before you add your uv resin if you want to seal it because at this point this one might just be okay for the simple fact that it's already a laminated sticker but I just want to show you guys just in case. So I'm thinking like, do I really need to laminate the stickers? But I wanted to do it this time just because I do want these to work. Because I was thinking of making these for like gifts for my coworkers. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a name on that. And that I can do by just printing out... Um, by just printing out one of my coworkers names on there. So while that's going, I want to move on to doing the epoxy resin. So I pretty much have it already set up for how I usually use it. So I have like this tray and I have this little mat in here to protect, um, well, I should say not to protect it because it doesn't really matter if it gets epoxy on it, but just to have this on here as a protective layer just in case I want it to do that. And then I have it set to about 150 and literally I just leave it on stay on so that it's always heating. So then what I'm gonna do now, what I'm gonna do now is, um, let's see. So that's going. I'm going to put some gloves on. So you want to make sure you're using gloves when you're doing epoxy resin. And I'm just going to do like a little quick, small one. 
So this one I'm going to use the two-part one, and I usually just do a one-to-one -one ratio. And what I can do is I have, like, these little beakers I can just use. Those ones might be actually two. Here, these ones. These are smaller. So I have these tiny ones. It's kind of like little medicine cups. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, like I said, a one-to-one -one ratio. So, because you don't need too much of it. So hopefully this will go out of here. So glow in the dark powder. And I got this glow in the dark powder off Amazon. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I did test it out just by like putting it in light in a UV light and then seeing if it would. Um... Yeah, I think I might do this one. So this pink one, since it's kind of like pink on one side, so I'm going to do pink instead of these. Need these, then I'm gonna mix the, I'm gonna mix it until I see no bubbles. And then I'm gonna add this powder for the color. And literally, I'm just gonna pour it into this mode, put it directly on here, or cause I can make it on here. And then I make sure this is level. The other thing is you wanna make sure this is level. I think so literally, I'm gonna mix it. And I don't know if you can see but you just want to mix it in one direction. So what you want to make sure you do too, is you want to make sure that you're mixing it first before you add your um, color. So like even if you're adding like um, pigment color, like the powder color, or if you're adding the dye colors, you want to make sure you mix your epoxy resin first before you add the color. You don't want to mix, mix, mess up the ratio to where it won't cure appropriately. So once you do that, you can mix in your color. So you just add as much as you want. I don't think there's like a perfect ratio. So I'm just going to, I usually just add like a little scoop. And then I just see how the colors look. So like if it looks too light, then I add more unless you want it to look light. But I usually kind of like add the color to how much I want the color to like show up. So in this case, so in this case, oh, I'm too really close to the camera. I like how that one looks. I feel like that will go cute with the keychain that I'm gonna make. You wanna pour it into your mold. I'm trying to make sure it gets in there evenly. What you wanna do is I'm gonna put this in the toaster oven for about two minutes. So I'm gonna put it in there for two minutes. And so that while that's doing, I'm gonna try to clean up a little bit. So I think it's been two minutes. So I'm gonna take this out and then like kinda let it sit in the cool air I found that like if you take it out and you let it kind of sit in the cool air um, for a little bit and then put it back in again like it cures really fast okay so for this last part so as you can see this is pretty cured and like I said I did it in this um, oven okay so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some of this glue on. I know it's a sticker, but I just want to make sure it ad adheres really well since it's like a different surface. And like I said, make sure you get all the extra pieces of sticker that might have came off when I was cutting. All right, so then I'm gonna place it in here. Okay. Then 
I'm just gonna try to make sure it's pressed in there good. So that way I don't get like any ear pockets. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of this UV resin um, on top to let it cure on top of there. And then I'm gonna do the same for this one. However, for the front, or I guess this can be the front or the back, but for this side, I already have the um, HT, not the HV, this is the adhesive vinyl. And I'm just gonna add that. And then I'm gonna add this UV resin. And then I'm gonna use a toothpick to just kinda um, make sure it gets all around. So I'm just gonna start from the middle. And this one, I'm just gonna fill. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and then I usually try to stay away from it because it's a UV light. So I usually like leave the room. So I'll leave and have it set for a minute while that goes. So for the most part, they feel dry. I'm gonna do it one more time. And then um, I'm gonna do the other side. All right. So like I said, that one's good. Okay. I think I'll put one on the back just so that it has like that same feel. Um, and then also if you ever notice that maybe it didn't get all the way on, you can always put another layer of UV resin and then seal it again. So I'm going to do that side. And then this one's good too. So I'm going to pop this one out. So then that's that glow in a dark one. So we're going to have to see. Let me if I can see if I turn off the light. If it will glow. Because I did leave it in the sun for a long time. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's so cute. So it does glow. So that's nice. That's a nice little feature. That is super cute. Okay. All right, so then I'm just going to add a name to the back of this one. So I can either put it on this side or this side. Hmm. Uh-oh. Just be careful. I think I might put it on this side because I think it looks cute on this side. <clears throat> I'm going to add... Where did I put it? Some more UV resin, and then I'm gonna cure it with the UV light. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put this on, probably like three minutes. When I double click it, that's 60 seconds. So I'll come back to you guys with the finished uh, product with the UV resin. Then I'm gonna um, add like the little charms and everything. Mm -hmm. 